um, back again with another addition to the marshmallow. A few weeks ago I went um, up in northern New Hampshire and I was doing some hikes um, to some gorgeous little waterfalls on a brook but it was a really humid day it rained off and on and when it wasn't raining the sun would come out and it was just horribly humid um, and when I came back to the van for to make lunch it, I was just so hot and sweaty and I thought okay yeah despite the fact that I'm not like living in this full time it would still be great to have a shower in it and gosh probably back in um, 2018 when I first bought the van and I started watching van videos one of the things I thought of <clears throat> almost immediately was why don't any of these people use like a dog pool as a fold-up shower base it just sort of made sense to me right off the bat and I don't know what made me think of it but I didn't see anybody that used one and I started suggesting it on different van life videos where people talked about what they did for showers um, and actually someone finally actually like heeded that suggestion I don't I mean I don't know I don't know how much they read all their comments because they're a van lifer that has you know thousands and thousands of subscribers and gets thousands and thousands of comments so I'm not sure how much time they have to actually read through them so I'm not saying I gave this person the idea but they did actually do it a couple months after I had suggested it and I don't know how it's worked out for them uh, they've never done like a follow-up video saying that this has been working great for me or whatever but anyway so I thought well why don't I heed my own suggestion and make one for the marshmallow so that's what we're gonna do today um, so I've gathered my supplies and some of them are just being repurposed items uh, some of them obviously I bought new and I'll show you each one of those now and tell you where I got it and how much it cost and, and all that stuff. Okay? So the first thing I have to do is figure out how big a round I can have the shower curtain and it'll still fit inside of here. And it looks like I've got it about right the way it is right now. I might cut a little bit off of it just to make it a little bit little bit smaller so it can have some little bit of room. And I'm using a PEX pipe cutter because it won't crush the uh, won't crush the plastic pipe. I may leave the other one a little bit bigger. So these were left over in the project. Oh, and these are now the same size. Anyway, pretty much. These were left over from a project. When my son was in grade school, he built a replica of the gateway arch. <laughs> so these are what were used to make the core of, of the arch itself. Good. 
And somewhere I actually have a dowel, a, a dowel from when I we built this that fits in these, but I can't find it, so I just bought these little pack of dowels at the Dollar Tree, and they'll work just fine. So I'm going to cut them. I don't know. I should be able to cut them with this, right? Precise measurement going on here. Oh, I didn't do too bad though. So one side of this dowel I will glue in so it stays in there permanently. And the other side I will leave I will not glue so that I can take these apart and store them easily. Now what I want to be able to do is have a shower either actually standing up or just sitting down in here. And I'll explain my reasoning for that in a minute. And why, you ask, am I going to use split rings? I'm going to use split rings because shower curtain rings, number one, take up a bit more room. They're not as, um, they're sort of big and bulky. And I don't need that much room for an actual rod since this rod is so small. second shower curtain is to overlap this first one by a couple rings at least and that way no water can get out. This is just a cheap plastic one. I don't know how well it's going to hold up but I wanted one that was um, mostly sort of clearish to let a lot of light in and this shower curtain will actually be this part of the of the shower curtain rod will actually be on the back side so I can actually have the door open and nobody can see me through this cloth shower curtain. on that seam. I don't need any of this. Okay, this one in here. Yes. No, oh, this is just crap though. off to get scissors. Next up, 
I'm going to hem it. And I'm going to hem it to the outside. Um, I will be stringing the ring in through the hem. And I don't want this on the inside to be collecting water. So if I hem it to the outside, it'll just be like this. So, up to the sewing machine, and I'll be back in a minute. Now, the reason why I want the reason why I want a second ring is because I want the curtain to stay out away from me. And you know how sometimes the heat from the shower can suck the curtain in. Not that my shower is going to be that hot, but I also think if I've got the door open, it's going to be windy and it'll be blowing around. And I thought maybe putting a second ring on the bottom would help it keep its shape and keep it a little bit weighted down. So we're going to run this through. That's going to work great. I know my limitations, <laughs> and I know I'm getting older, and there are going to be times if I've hiked a really rough hike, uh, especially coming down, it kills my knees, and I can imagine a time when I am either so exhausted or my knees hurt so much that standing in the shower will just be sort of more than I want to do. So I want to be able to sit down in there and take a shower. So I bought this little stool for that, which is kind of handy to have in a van anyway. So I can sit right on that inside here, but I don't need that huge shower curtain. And on top of all that, Whatever I end up doing to rig up the shower itself, it's going to be way too high up if I'm sitting way down here. So I want to be able to shorten the shower curtain, which means bring that top rod down, but not have all of this just bundled up in the little doggy pool. Good morning. New day. Uh, sewing the tabs on this curtain was a bit fiddly. Actually, more than a bit fiddly. Is downright annoying. Um, so for anyone who tries this at home, do not sew the bottom hem before you sew the tabs on. Because I couldn't lay it out flat, it was hard to get it all measured right to get these tabs even around. So instead of the binder clips, this is what I'm actually going to be using. And uh, in hindsight, I probably didn't need the binder clips at all because it really didn't help all that much except to sort of I don't know do the quick first measurement of where this needed to be how much I needed to fold the curtain up but I got the tab sewn all the way around and of course now the curtain is really short and way up in the air but this is for when I'm sitting down so now I am going to take this twine and I'm going to chain some things to hang from the hooks that are up here, these hooks, so that I can hang it down so that it sits down inside here, my little doggy pool for when I'm sitting down. <sighs> And the reason why I'm crocheting a chain instead of just using the twine on its own is the twine on its own will get knotted up really easy, but the chain won't get knotted as easily. 
and it'll make it a little easier to see thicker and easier to grab onto. So here it is. Just about finished. I know this whole rigging system of, of trying to keep it level with the strings isn't exactly the prettiest, um, but that's sort of like um, how things are in a van sometimes. They're not always aesthetically pleasing. But as you can see, I have plenty of room in this little shower stall. I still haven't sewn this pocket on yet. I will have to do that. But for now, this all works well. Let me set the camera back up on the tripod and I'll show you the shower itself, the shower head itself, and we'll undo all these tabs and drop it down and see how that works. So the shower I bought is a uh, Kedsum. I'll put the link where I bought it on Amazon down below. And what's included in it is the shower head with the hose. And this is detachable. And it comes with a spray nozzle as well. with <clears throat> several little adapter things to hang the shower. Uh, for instance, when, when the shower head is on, this, you slide that on there and then you can hang this with this hook here somewhere. You can also put it on a suction cup. I'm not going to use any of that because I'm just going to simply hang it over, just hang it, drape it over the hoop hanging the shower curtain. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because the actual pump, which it comes with two batteries, so these are the two batteries and then the cord to charge them, the USB charge. Um, but this you, allows you to turn the pump off and on. So so what I will do is I will be turn it on to wet down and then turn it off, soap up, and then turn it on again to rinse. So I'm not going to leave it running. I'm not going to be standing under the shower head, letting it all just wash over me and wasting water while I'm camping. So I have no reason to have it hooked up somewhere um, to stand under it as a shower. So there's all that. And let's, uh, let's undo these tabs now and drop the curtain down again.
I may find once I'm using it, I don't need all these tabs hooked up. But I can maybe only do four on each, you know, one on each side. So now let's raise it up. back to a full shower again. Just step in. Okay, so there it is, my makeshift shower, which I think will work just great. It's large, it doesn't, uh, but it can fold down very compact and not take up much room in the van. Um, I used the tiny quarter inch pecs because I didn't want big hula hoop that I couldn't make smaller. I mean, those I can do like sort of in a figure eight and bungee it, and it'll take up very little room. So. We'll test the shower out later and see how that goes. Good afternoon. Ready to take a shower. I've uh, walked around with this bed head all day, waiting till it warmed up this afternoon. This morning I put this jug with three gallons of water in it, laid flat out in the field to have the sun on it and heat the water up, uh, which is what I plan to do if, if I'm able to. Um, otherwise, I'll just boil water. But I've got three gallons in here, and let's see how far that takes me. First, let's set up the shower. Fantastic. It works great. I'd be surprised if I even used an entire gallon of water. Um, so the best way for me to test it is to pour the water that's in that, you know, get the water that's in the sink into one gallon jugs and see how I did. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay. So the drain line. Here. Pour it in here. See how much water is left. Okay. 
there's one gallon. And there's almost two gallons, so I used a, a, a gallon and a half. I mean, that's the absolute max, um, because this is actually more than half a gallon. So that's pretty good. I know I don't have to boil that much water then. Whew. All right, now to drain this. dry out my van from all the water I spilled. Well, I'll wrap this video up, get it posted. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you like my idea of a shower. It was pretty simple, even though this video was pretty long. So thanks for holding in there. You have a great evening and see you soon.